we are going to see about diagonalized language throughout this video we are going to represent l subscript d as the representation of a diagonalization language the definition of a diagonalization language is a set of binary strings which are not accepted by a machine represented by the same binary string so the mathematical way of representing this definition is is a set of strings right so wi belongs to 0 plus 1 the whole star such that wi does not belong to the language generated by the turing machine i i hope you know what a turing machine is so if you don't know what a turing machine is refer to my encoding of a turing machine where i have explained what a turing machine is so here i is an integer so i will convert this integer to a base 2 number and then this base 2 number is a binary string i can represent the base 2 number as a binary string also so for example let's say there is a number let's say there is a number 3 fine i can convert this decimal number to a binary number right so this is a decimal number of base 10 i am converting it to a binary number of base 2 so from integer i am converting into base 2 so this is also we can interpret as a binary string right in the previous video i have mentioned that every turing machine can be represented as a integer such as turing machine 1 turing machine 2 turing machine 3 so on like this there are infinitely many number of turing machines available fine right? so here this binary string can be interpreted as two ways one is a turing machine 3 and this is also a string of w3 so i can represent this binary string in two ways that is a turing machine encoding of a turing machine 3 and it is a string w3 fine right? so from this i am going to define a diagonalization language see here w3 which belongs to 0 plus 1 the whole star right so this will be a 0 plus 1 the whole star such that w3 should not belong to the language generated by the turing machine 3 so this is the definition of a diagonalization language we are going to focus on whether the diagonalization language is a recursively enumerable language that means if w belongs to the diagonalization language <coughs> then there exists a turing machine such that w belongs to the language generated by the turing machine this is what we are going to focus in this video <coughs> there are two cases here the string can belong to the diagonalization language or the string will not belong to the diagonalization language fine right? so what a turing machine does is if the string belongs to the diagonalization language the turing machine just halt and accept that string if the string does not belong to the diagonalization language there can be two possibilities one the turing machine can halt and reject that string or else the turing machine can go into an infinite loop so this is about the turing machine with respect to the diagonalization language now we construct a table t okay so this table t where the row contains the infinitely available turing machine and the columns contain the set of strings available here this is turing machine 1 this is turing machine 2 this is turing machine 3 turing machine 4 turing machine 5 turing machine 6 and so on similarly this is the word 1 word 2 word 3 word 4 word 5 word 6 word 7 fine so i will consider this as a matrix now and this matrix will be a binary matrix which accepts either 0 or 1 so here i have represented one right this one represents that w5 is accepted by the turing machine 4 okay so the string 5 belongs to the language generated by the turing machine 4 1 okay so this 0 here represents that the string 4 doesn't belong to the language generated by the turing machine 6 this is how i'm going to construct the table which is in the form of a binary matrix right so i am representing the decimal number 3 into a 
base 2 number binary number i can interpret this base 2 number as a binary string also the binary string can be considered as a word as well as a turing machine now okay right? this is what a diagonalization language right so w3 should not belong to the language generated by the turing machine 3 i am going to consider a vector d which is the diagonal element so this table's diagonal element i am going to consider it okay so this t11 is the first element of d vector this is the second element t22 so all the diagonal elements i am considering here okay so if there is an element tii which means i am taking word i which belongs to the language generated by the turing machine i if it is 1 if this value is 1 we can say that wi is accepted by the language generated by the turing machine i if it is 0 then we say that the string is not accepted by the language generated by that turing machine so now we are going to consider vector d complement what is vector d complement is i'll take one element in vector d i'll complement here next i'll take the second element and i'll do complement here then i'll take third element i'll complement here and so on so i complement all the elements present in the vector d so now what happens to this one so if i complement it if it is zero then it will be accepted then that string will be accepted by the turing machine because this is a complement right so here it becomes zero here it will become one in a complement right so that's what i have written from here to here if the cell value is zero then the string will be accepted by the turing machine if the cell value is one the string will not be accepted by the turing machine here d dash i is equal to one so let's take the ith element of d dash this element if it is one what we can imply so it is bi-directional right so both ways it is true so if d dash of i is equal to one what we can say that the string doesn't belong to the language generated by the turing machine right so that's what i have written here if this cell value is one then this will be true and vice versa we have seen the definition of a diagonalization language right wi that belongs to 0 plus 1 the whole star such that wi doesn't belong to the language generated by the turing machine i this was the definition we have seen instead of this what i can write i can substitute this right d dash of i is equal to 1 so instead of this i am substituting d dash of i is equal to 1 so the diagonalization definition will be changed to this okay wi such that d dash of i vector is equal to 1 there is a note here in the previous video of encoding a turing machine i have mentioned that every turing machine corresponds to an integer i okay so refer this video encoding of a turing machine in this i have explained why turing machine corresponds to an integer there so now we will focus on is the diagonalization language a recursively enumerable language let us assume it is a recursively enumerable language first okay our assumption is ld is a recursively enumerable language if it is a recursively enumerable language then there must be a turing machine available for that language right so if this is true is there a turing machine that accepts ld so what that means is so if there is a turing machine that accepts ld means we can interpret as so if there is a row in t which is equal to d dash so how we can interpret this see here turing machine right so turing machine is represented in rows this is a turing machine fine this is the encoding of a turing machine so is there a row in t which is a turing machine which accepts ld ld became d dash here right ld became d dash here from here i can interpret this statement is there a turing machine that accepts ld into is there a row in t which is equal to d dash so this is the focus area now so i have to concentrate on this statement i have to prove whether this statement is either true or false let's check whether this statement is true or false let's take the same table t the rows is turing machine and the word is i okay 
and then there are many cells in this so this is a table t with rows as the turing machine and columns as the words so i am assuming it let i th row be the row in t which is equal to the d dash vector because i have to find this right let's assume that i be the row in t which is equal to the d dash vector this is my assumption now now turing machine i ti so instead of tm i i am representing the row i as ti from now on i will represent ti as the row i fine so ti is equal to d dash that's what this assumption says right let i be the row in t which is equal to the ve vector d dash so ti is equal to t dash now i will take the jth element will be one of the element of the diagonal element okay so ti this is ti throat jth element okay so ti of j is equal to d dash of j right because j tell both the j element should be true if all the elements of the diagonal element as well as this row should match right so all the elements in this cell as well as the diagonal elements all the elements should match so here the first element and this first element should match the second element here should match with the second element the third element here should match with the third element and so on okay so for all that's why i have represented for all j is equal to 1 2 3 up till how many elements are there available in the table so ti of j can be equal to dj the whole complement i can write d complement of j as dj the whole complement let's assume now j is equal to i okay what happens now so j equal to i means t j j i can write right because i and j are same now so t j of j will be equal to d of j so what t j of j actually mean it is the element of vector d right t j of j so here we have seen right what will be t j of j so t j of j will be d of j right so d of j was constructed from the diagonal elements of t but d dash is the complement fine so t j of j will be the jth element of vector d so now i can write t j of j as d j right so is it possible for d of j is equal to d of j complement it is not possible right because if i keep this as 1 this will be 0 if i keep this as 0 this will be 1 because it is complement to each other it will never be same so it is contradicting our assumption let i throw be the row in t which is equal to d dash vector so what that implies so there is no row in t which will be equal to d dash vector right so this is d vector i'm complementing all the elements in this vector as d dash vector right all the diagonal elements are complemented to get the d dash vector so at least there will be one element in every row which does not match to d dash vector so this statement can never be true is there a turing machine that accepts ld i'm back tracking now this assumption is false so because of this assumption is false this statement will be false because of this statement is false this statement will be false we see all are bidirectional if this is false this also will be false if this is false this also will be false so what we can conclude that ld is not a recursively enumerable language so our final conclusion is there will never be a turing machine existing for a diagonalization language